The National Broadcasting Company presents another in the series of famous stories for the young of all ages. Adventure Ahead. This week, a classic story of espionage and intrigue. Green Mantle by John Buchan. A timeless story of the men who fight behind the front. A story of the Secret Service. Adventure Ahead. Green Mantle. The magic word, Green Mantle. The legend that struck terror along the eastern front and as a miracle came true. I want to tell you how it happened. How I came to find the secret of the legend of Green Mantle. It all began at the British Foreign Office one afternoon in the early days of the war. Major Henry? Yes? The Colonel's expecting you this way, please. Thank you. Step right in, sir. Morning, Colonel. Well, well, well. How are you, Dick? Ready for your new assignment. <laughs> I'd hardly recognize you in that civilian <laughs> outfit. <laughs> does seem a little strange. It's a good disguise. I only hope it fools the Germans as well. Oh? Uh -huh. The Germany this time. The very heart of it. Berlin, Vienna, Southern Europe, right under the noses of the German Secret Service. I see. Must be important. Dick, the course of the war in the Southeast may well depend upon information that you and your assistants obtain. Oh, then I'm not working alone, sir. Well, not entirely. It's a dangerous mission. I've assigned two men to help you. Uh, just a moment. Yes, sir. Send in Blenkiron and Sandy Cospatrick, will you? Yes, sir. Sandy? Is he back from the Crimea? Arrived a few days ago. Sandy's the only one of our staff familiar with the mountains of Southern Europe. He'll be invaluable. I'm sure he will, sir. And I'm sending blank iron because you may need some help in Germany before you get... Ah, here they are. Uh, come in, please, will you? Well, hello, Dick. Sandy, how are you? Ready for another go at the Bosch. Good, so am I. Uh, Dick, this is John Blankiron, uh, Major Dick Hannock. How do you do, Major? Pleasure to work with you. Thanks. Gentlemen, I'll come directly to the point. As you know, the Russians have finally fought the Germans to a standstill in the southeast of Europe. A stalemate that promises to last for several months. But what you don't know is that there's a growing tension down there. Rumblings of trouble among the wild nomadic mountain tribes. Well, what's that to do with the war? Well, those natives might throw thousands of armed men into the conflict. Against the Germans? No, Dick. Against our allies, the Russians. But, but why? We don't know for certain. But it's our guess that the regular German troops are worn, tired, exhausted. And failing to get large reinforcements, the... German Secret Service may have hit upon a scheme of inciting the natives to revolt. To break the stalemate. Exactly. But, Colonel... Yes, Sandy? I don't see how the Germans could do it. I, I've lived and worked with those native tribes, even speak their language. I know their feelings about war and their deep religious customs. It, it just doesn't seem possible. But the fact remains, Sandy. Reports from our agents in Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, all tell the same story. There's some sort of feeling of unrest down there, and it spells trouble for the Allies. And you believe Germany's behind it, Colonel? I'm certain of it, Blanca. Of course, when it comes, the uprising will be more like a... like a holy war, a crusade. Yes, and the natives are probably only waiting for some sort of religious revelation, like a star, a man, a prophecy, to set off the fireworks. Yes, but, Sandy, how, how could something like that cause them to revolt? They are deeply religious, Dick, and devoted to their leaders and their prophets. Why, well, I expect they'd follow a chosen leader into battle against any foe. And if the Germans knew something of that intense religious feeling, they could control an uprising and turn the natives against the Russians. Yes, it's quite possible. That, gentlemen, is your mission. To go into the mountains of southern Europe, to find that secret. And it's possible to stop the uprising. And your plan of attack, Colonel? Simple. The three of you must separate and operate alone. Then I want you to meet together, say, in um, two months, at a rendezvous in the mountains somewhere near the Black Sea. Dondra Edor would be a good place to meet, Colonel. All right, Sandy. It's in German hands, of course, but it's near the native stronghold in the mountains. Good. And we'll meet at Dondra Edor two months from today. Now, as to your departure from England, Sandy's going directly to Istanbul, disguised as a Turkish seaman, and from there north into the mountains. Yes, Colonel. But you, Dick, and Blenkiron are going through Germany to southern Europe the hard way. Mm, I take it there's work to be done en route. <laughs> right, Mr. Blenkiron. The Major's traveling alone, of course. 
But I'm counting on you to follow him in case he needs help. Yes, sir, I understand. You'll pose as engineers in neutral countries. But since you both speak German fluently, you'll have no trouble passing as citizens once you're inside Germany. On your shoulders, Dick, falls the greatest burden. Yes, Colonel? You must find out something about this unknown trouble that's brewing in the South. I can't tell you where to get the information because I don't know. Look for the answer in Berlin first. Then Vienna. Caucasus, anyway. Yes, sir. Here's the address of Otto Spion, one of our agents in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can help you. And if possible, I want you to become acquainted with the Colonel von Stumm. Von Stumm. He's head of the German Secret Service in Southern Europe. Just now he's in the north, according to Otto Spion. I see. That's all I can tell you, Dick. The rest is up to you. Your mission's difficult, if not almost impossible. You may not succeed. I understand, sir. But if you three do meet again, two months from now in Donra Adal, perhaps you'll know the secret of the trouble. Sandy left for Istanbul that night. And leaving Blank Iron to follow me within a week, I flew from England to a neutral country, carefully rehearsing the part that I must play to gain the German's confidence. And I had not long to wait. For on arrival at the airport, I was questioned at the German passport office. Senor Henney? See? Si? Your passport and papers seem to be in order. Good. But uh, they are curious about your business in Germany. Oh? Why do you insist upon flying to Berlin immediately? Why? Because I'm an industrial engineer, as you can see from my papers. Yeah. And I bring many suggestions which I think your Ministry of Labor will find of interest, particularly plans for the commercial development of the Crimea. Oh, I see. It is important that I reach Berlin soon. Of course, Senor Henry. It can be arranged. In fact, I can give you transportation on the next plane. No, Senor. It is impossible to find a hotel room anywhere in Berlin. But I must find one. Here, now. Well, I... I see what I can do, Senor. That man, the new one. His name is Honey, a new dog. But his face seems familiar. You have checked his passport? Of course. Everything is in order. I went everywhere in Berlin, mingled with the military, the politicians, attended all the theaters, the meetings, the cafes, hoping to hear some word or phrase, some bit of information that would help me. But there was nothing. And then, after two weeks, when I thought that it was safe, I looked for Otto Spion, our agent in Berlin. Ah, good evening, Fräulein. Good evening. I just happened to be passing by your shop. I thought I'd stop in. Yeah, mein Herr. Very nice shop you have here, Fräulein. It belongs to my father. Oh, Herr Otto Spion? Yeah, mein Herr. Is he in, perhaps? I'd like to see him. No, he is not here just now. Oh, that's... Too bad I've come a long way to see him. Would you tell him that Richard Hannay paid a visit? Oh, you are... You are Mr. Hannay. Yes. Oh, we've been expecting you just a moment. Papa! Papa, come into the shop. Oh. Mr. Hannay. Oh, well, good, good. Mr. Hannay, huh? I'm glad you arrived safely, sir. Thank you, Hashbjorn. Your friend, Mr. Blankiron, was here a few days ago. Blankiron, here? <laughs> he seems to know more about you than you do about him. Well, I've been busy ever since I arrived, looking for stray bits of information and trying to locate Colonel von Stumm. Von Stumm? He's in Vienna. Vienna? His home is there. Oh. Uh, why do you want to see him? I must find some vital information. He's a difficult, dangerous man. What kind of information are you looking for? I must find out about the situation near the front in southern Europe, about the nomad tribes in the mountains. The, the mountains? Oh, I see I startle you, Herr Spion. Indeed you do. Only yesterday, one of our men, Herr Mittel, returned from that region, the mountains. mountains. What did he tell you? What did he say? He was afraid to talk, even to me. He told you nothing? He was even afraid to write a report. Where can I reach him? I'll give you his address. It's near the Wilmstrasse. I'll find it. But be careful. Herr Mittel said 
He thinks that he's being followed. All the way across Berlin I ran, into a shabby tenement, up the noisy stairs to the unlocked door of Mittel's room. But I was too late, by minutes, for he'd been shot within the hour and lay there weak and dying on the floor before me. Mittel, speak to me. I'm your friend. Try to talk to me. Mittel, try to talk. Tell me about the trouble in the south, the mountain. Grubber will beat Grubber. Yes, yes, I know, but what's going to happen there? Happen? Happen? Yes, yes. Green mantle. Green mantle. That one meaningless word, green mantle, and he was dead. The first time I'd heard it, but that word was destined to roar in my brain a thousand times again. I knew it was important, and I resolved to go to Vienna to see von Stumm. But I must see the colonel. I am sorry, mein Herr. He is conferring with the deputy. Colonel von Stumm cannot be disturbed. But it is important. It uh, concerns his interest in the south, the mountains. The mountains? Yes. Oh, I am certain the colonel will see you immediately. I must apologize for keeping you waiting, ha honey. That's quite all right, Colonel. I was discussing some matters with Rasta Bay, the young man who passed you in the doorway. You know him? No, Colonel. He also is concerned with the mountainous region near the Russian line. Oh. Um, but suppose you come to the point of your visit, ha honey. What interest do you have in the region? My interest, Colonel, is mainly one of economics. Oh, so. As I've told you, the government in Berlin has directed me to survey the newly conquered territory with a view toward uh, establishing certain slave labor factories. Oh, and you wish to know something of the possibilities of the region in that regard? Exactly, uh, Colonel. Oh, well, I can give you that sort of information, I suppose. Uh, just a moment, I get my portfolio. Um, here we are. My plans are in here. Uh, even the plans for Green Mantle? What did you say? What do you know about Green Mantle? Why, why nothing, Colonel. Then how did you know that name? Oh, rumor, perhaps. I heard it mentioned around the government offices. No one seems to know much about it. Oh, I see. Uh, that's different. <laughs> I'm sorry, Colonel. I didn't realize it was a military secret. But I'm sorry. Uh, it's all right, huh, honey. You'll be able to read all about Green Mantle someday... After the fall of Russia. <laughs> but until then, the plans will have to stay right here in my portfolio. I knew then that part of the secret of Green Mantle was in Vienna. And somehow I must get those papers. Walking back from my visit near the Bristol Hotel, I had a strange encounter when... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon. Quite all right. My fault. I was... Blank iron. Shh. Careful. It's... Step down this alley. I've no idea how glad I am to see you, Blankiron. I'm at your service, Major. Blankiron, want to commit a burglary? Of course. <laughs> what is it, a piano? <laughs> Other than that, some confidential papers in the portfolio at von Stumm's. But that place is surrounded by policemen, soldiers, day and night. That's right. Won't be a simple task. Mm. But I think we can handle it, Major. First of all, we'll have to borrow a few boxes of groceries. <laughs> You two cannot enter the Colonel's residence. But we must. These groceries are for Colonel von Sturm himself. A special order. Well, all right. You can go in. But there must be a mistake. We did not order all these groceries. We don't know about that. All we do is deliver. Well, you can leave them if you must. I'll tell the Colonel about it as soon as he wakes up. the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Keep your gun handy. You may need it. Right, Major. Careful now. Oh, there he is, asleep. Mm -hmm. And there's a portfolio. Go ahead, Major. I'll keep him covered. All right. I'll stand here by his bed so that he's hey, done. Hey. What are you two doing here? Who are you? What are you doing? Don't move, Colonel Von Stumann. Keep quiet. No, you, you can't. My portfolio. The plans. No, you can't. You can't. I told you to keep quiet. But, but you Close the papers, plan. Major. Yes, these are the ones. 
at least part of the information about Green Mantle. You, I should have suspected you from the first. But fortunately, you didn't, Colonel. You will never get away with this, you, you English swinehorn. Will you keep quiet? I'll track you down if it is the last thing I ever do. Sorry, Colonel. Oh, can't say I didn't warn you. Let's get out of here. I'd like to kill the arrogant fool, but I suppose it's going to make too much noise. No time for that. We've got to separate and escape. There's a car down the street you can use, Major. And you? I'll manage. Then we'll meet as we planned. At Dongra Edao. At our rendezvous. Precious plans concealed upon me. I left Vienna speeding westward in the car Blank Iron had stolen. And it was a wild ride over rough, deserted roads and highways with my foot jammed down upon the floorboard, nursing every bit of speed I could. Although I had a few hours straw, I knew the alarm would soon be out and the roads would be thick with men and cars searching for me, waiting to kill me and take back the secret papers. Instinct led me westward and southward toward the Daniel, the only hope of quick escape. Until at last, the sputtering engine told me that the gas was gone. And then I struck out through the forest, knowing that the Germans were not far behind me. All that night, and still another day and night, I stumbled blindly through the forest. I dared not stop to rest or read the papers that I'd captured, for they were all around me. I knew von Sturm was at my heels. Watching every opportunity, using every trick I knew, I managed to evade them and struggled onward, tired and worn and hungry, toward the river and escape. And on my fourth day of wandering, I crossed a hill and saw the Danube there below me. Stand to there. Stand to. Hold the line. Want to get in the way? Aye, Captain. Captain Shank. Oh, Captain Shank. Huh? Well, well, what's the matter? This man here, Captain, just came on board, wants a job. Oh? So? Yes, Captain, I need a job. Ever worked on river barges before? Well, yes. Yes, I have. I, I'm an engineer. Hmm. Could use another engineer. Long trip ahead. Well, I can handle the job, Captain Schenk. Hmm. All right, it's yours. Take this string of barges all the way down the Danube with me, and it's worth five marks a day. <laughs> Good enough. And uh, what is our destination? Well, half the cargo goes to Sevastopol. Yes, Captain. And the rest goes to a port over close to the mountain, a place called Donra Edao. Easy there. Fire up. Easy. Well, end of our trip. So, this is Don Raida. Small port, but important. Front line of the war, not more than 30 or 40 miles from here. Other side of the mountain. Yes, I know. This all used to be Russian country. Why the... Oh. Hmm? Army official there coming aboard. Wonder what they want. I don't think I'll stay to find out. Must be a couple of colonels among them. Secret service. Hmm. Uh, can I help you, gentlemen? You have a man on board name of Herr Honey. Honey? Why, uh, why, of course. Uh, new man. He's here, Colonel von Stumm. He's here. Oh, well, well. So I have at last caught up with him. Where's this man, Captain? Why, uh, over there in his cabin. He went inside when he saw you coming. Oh, he did, huh? Hmm. Get your pistols ready. The man's dangerous. He may try anything. Now, Captain. Yes, sir. This cabin here. This is it. Then throw open the door and let us kill the rat we have trapped. Why, he's gone! <laughs> So my arrival at Donra Eda was somewhat icy cold and wet. Although I had escaped von Sturm again, there wasn't much relief in knowing that he was so close behind me, trailing me, guessing my every move. 
The day was soon at hand, however, for our rendezvous. And I waited at a table in a small sidewalk cafe, the appointed place at the appointed time. Soon, two figures approached me. I presume this gentleman wouldn't mind if we sat here? I hope not. Sandy, blink on. <laughs> Welcome. Sit down, sit down. Hello, Dick. We meet again, eh, Major? Yes, and it's good to see you both. Uh, blink on, you, you had trouble? Not a bit, Major. My life's been quiet since you left me. <laughs> Did you, Sandy? Well, nothing happened on my sea journey, Dick, but since I arrived a week ago, I've been up in the mountains hmm? talking with the natives. Oh, tell me. The nomad tribes are in an ugly mood. Why, Sandy? Because their prophets foretold the arrival of a leader who's soon to appear and lead them into battle. A prophecy. He's sort of a legendary figure. A man they've never seen before. And his name? Green Mantle. Oh, that, that confirms the papers, the plans we stole, Major. It does, Blank Iron. What's all this about, Dick? We also know something of Green Mantle. Because we stole the plans of this uprising from von Sturm. The German Secret Service? Mm hmm. Look here, Sandy. All this? Yes, Sandy. This is part of the secret of Green Mantle that I've carried halfway across Europe. You're right about the prophecy, the legend of Green Mantle. But listen, the Germans plan to produce a live man, a leader of flesh and blood Green Mantle to fulfill that prophecy, to lead the nomad tribes against our allies. But that's impossible. The Green Mantle doesn't exist. Not unless the Germans produce a bogus leader, a man who claims to be Green Mantle. Oh, so that's their plan. A hoax seems incredible, but I can see that it might work. Right now, the natives are restless, waiting for the prophecy to come true. They'd follow almost anybody into battle. Then we've no time to waste. That uprising must be stopped. But what can we do, Major? We must find out the identity of the man who dares to pose as Green Mantle. But how? We must go to the only man who can tell us. We must go to the only place that we've yet to visit. Eh? Where? The control point of this entire uprising. The headquarters here of the German Secret Service. And Colonel von Stumm. Are you mad? They've been after us ever since Vienna. Yes, I know, I know. It, it's like putting our heads in the mouth of a lion. But if you're with me... Count me in, Major. Of course, Dick. Then I have a plan for learning the rest of the secret of Green, Green Mantle. And the first step is to surrender to Colonel von Sturm. Well, gentlemen, I must say I never expected to catch all three of you. To have you standing before me here, <laughs> helpless in my own office. <laughs> Nevertheless, Colonel, here we are. And at my mercy. <laughs> I don't know the meaning of that word. I'll make you three regret the day you ever joined the British Secret Service. Because I can assure you, gentlemen, your death will not be quick. Why, you... Careful, Blenkine. I warn you. Stand against that wall, the three of you. This lug on my desk is not an ornament. We understand, Colonel. Now, before you are taken away, I have a surprise for you. Since you have all expressed such an interest in Green Mantle, I thought I'd let you see him. What? Green Mantle? Yes, Major. But that's impossible. It's only a legend. Then watch, and you will see a legend materialize. Are we ready, Dick? Not yet. Wait. Rasta Bay! Rasta Bay! Come in here! Rasta Bay? I heard that name before. Rasta Bay. You call me, Colonel? Come here. Oh, I remember him now. I saw him in Vienna. Look at his cape, Major. Emerald green, the emblem of green mantle. Rasta Bay? Yes, Colonel? Show these gentlemen your beautiful green cape. Uh, yes, sir. Ah. You see? That's good. <laughs> and now tell them what your new name is going to be in just a few hours. My name will be Green Mantle. I will be Great Man. Hero. Great man. All right, man. Now. Catch his attention. I'll grab the gun. <laughs> I will be hero. Green mantle. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> You're excellent for the past. <laughs> I will be greatest man in... Look out, Colonel. <laughs> no, you don't, Colonel. Oh, my face. Oh, Careful there, Colonel. I've got the gun now. Are you all right, Sandy, Major? Yes, all right. Sir. No, you can't get away with it. Keep, keep him covered, Blink Iron. Yes, Major. What you do? What you do? Take off that cape. Uh, no. I, I know take off. I am hero. That's what you think. Take off that cape. No. No, I, I run away. I run away. I'll take care of that. <coughs> oh, what have you done? You have killed him. Oh, no, Colonel. He's just wounded. Now, keep quiet, Sandy. Yes, Dick. 
The green cape, grab it. Right. What are you doing? You can't do that. Colonel, if you don't keep still, I'm going to bust you over the head again. What, 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 what are you going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do, Colonel von Strum. The nomad tribesmen are going to be led into battle after all, but they won't be led against our side as you'd planned. Instead, they'll attack and fight the Germans. No! No! You can't do that! No! Not so much noise there, Colonel. All right, Dick, I'm ready to ride. You look fine, Sandy. It's just like it was made for me. <laughs> Maybe it was. Well, let's go, Dick. All right, and blink on. Yes, Major. You'll stay here and watch the Colonel? Of course, Major. Be careful, von Sturm doesn't play any tricks on you. Uh, I've got him covered. Good luck. We'll have to hurry, Sandy. Long ride to the mountains. I saw some horses outside. That'll be the quickest way. I only hope the natives wait until... Well, I guess the colonel tried to play a trick. And didn't get away with it. <laughs> The natives were assembled and waiting as we rode into their camp. I stood aside there, watching Sandy as he moved up through the milling mass of men. And a hush fell over them, like a spell. And Sandy spoke out, loud and clear. Men of the mountains, your prophets have told you that Green Mantle would come and lead you into battle. I ask you now to follow me to attack the Germans who cringe beneath the blows of our allies. If you believe your prophets, if you believe the legend of Green Mantle, then follow me to victory into battle against the Germans. Sandy rode alone out through the mountain pass. And he was almost beyond their sight before the first few natives took their guns and rode behind him. Then others fell in behind the leaders. And there were more and more, until at last every man of them rode out, roaring through the mountain pass, storming toward the German lines to crack the eastern front. very front, a single man with sandy hair, a bright green cloak. But the prophecy had come true. The long-looked-for revelation was a fact. The prophets of the people had not failed. Green Mantle had appeared at last. Adventure Ahead has presented the famous John Buchan story, Green Mantle, in a radio dramatization by Tom Goutte. In today's play, the part of Dick Tanay was played by Alexander Scourby, Guy Spall as Blenkern, Jack Stanley as Sandy, and E.A. Krumschmidt as von Stumm. Others in the cast were Horace Bram, Guy Sorrell, Len Schurer, Kathleen Cordell, Charmé Allen, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Herbert Rice. NBC and its affiliated independent stations present Adventure Ahead as a public service. Uh -huh.